Hi everyone, I'm Russ. I am Mark. And this is a Spirited Endeavor. Prime of the Pump Edition. That's right. Okay. We're veering way off the path now. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, the only thing I know about rum mm -hmm. is Captain Morgan, yeah. Bacardi. No, exactly. You know, it was always a mixed, you know, mixed in something. You never really drank it straight. You know, it was always in a cocktail. Yeah. Um, and I don't know much about rum Same. at all. Yeah. I mean, other than it's made with like sugar. Yep. No, that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge as well. Okay. So, um, so I was cruising down the Rome Mile, mm -hmm. and uh, just, and I, and this one caught my eye. Okay. And this one caught my eye because of a, a couple of things. First of all, it's it's a it was aged in oak. Okay. It was aged in oak barrels, and then it was also aged in oak barrels for eight years. And we're familiar with oak barrels. We are familiar with oak barrels. So, I figured this might be a good jumping on point, you know, from, yeah. you know, coming off of, you know, whiskey and, you know, barrel aging. And we kind of know what that brings to the party. Kind of want to know if, you know, if barrel aging it, you know, gets us closer to rum. I would be very curious about that. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Like you said, I mean, we're very familiar with what oak tends to bring to the, to the party. Mm-hmm. Um, the question for me, you know, we've had finishes, we've had other whiskeys finished in uh, barrels used for aging, but uh, yeah, I don't think we've gone full rum yet. So we have not. This so, is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it will be too. Now we like what br rum brings to the table. Yeah, absolutely. You know, with whiskeys, you know, once it's you know finished in a um, in a uh, a rum cask. Yeah, I think going into some of the rum finishes that we've had in other whiskeys, like Scotch with rum finish or more bourbon with rum finish, we were thinking like hangover, you know. <laughs> right. Um, and we never got that. We got a really nice sweetness out of it, which was really interesting. So I'm hoping that's kind of what comes through with this, along with the the oak. Right. Exactly. So uh, this one's El Dorado, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it's made in Guyana. Interesting. I know, right? Never had a whiskey from, or any type of alcohol from Guyana. Yeah, before. we're kind of expanding our map, too. I know, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah. So here, let's uh, let's get into this, see yeah. what this... Uh, what well, this I will say, is. nice color in the bottle. It's Oh my God, it's beautiful. I wonder if rum, because of the different... I wonder if it somehow ages differently. Uh, if the oak affects it differently. You know, because proof can affect how quickly you get oak flavor into a whiskey. Um, that's one part. I wonder if the grain that's used would also affect, you know, how quickly the oak presents itself taste-wise. Um, I don't know if it uses grain. Oh, so straight up just sugar. I, I think it's... I think, I think that's right. Yeah, maybe. I didn't know... Well, again, this... This shows my ignorance when it comes to rum. I don't yeah. know if they mix in anything else. Yeah, and, I, and we purposely went into this not knowing much. Right. So, um, you know, I didn't do any research into this or anything because I want to kind of go in this cold and see, yeah. you know, what you know what we pick out of you know what we you know what we pick up out of this. Well, the nice thing is there's no preconceived notions. You know, we've been drinking bourbon and whiskey long enough at this point where we see a bottle, and a lot of times you're just going to make a a knee-jerk reaction to something you see on that bottle based on past experiences. In this case, there's no past experiences, so whatever we get on the palate is what we get. All right. All right, that's our preamble. Yep, that's Now we're going to drink some whiskey. We're going to uh, we're drink whiskey. It's not whiskey. Here's, we're going we're to drink the... the alcoholic spring. beverage of some sort. <laughs> I will say it is really pretty in the glass. It does have some nice oils on it. Interesting nose, very different. There, it is an oaky nose, though. Yeah, it's oak, but a different type of sweetness. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely like a, like, like rock candy. Wow. Yeah, it's um. Wonder what kind of char they use. I don't know. It's a, it's got a pretty decent char to it. It does. That's what I'm picking up. It's not like ashy or any, you know, campfire or anything like that. But it's it definitely a char to it. It yeah. It's light and bright, and uh, the wow. the oak, you know, seems like it's like fresh cut oak. Mm -hmm. It's not what I would call complex as far as the nose is mm -hmm. concerned, but it's interesting to me. Yeah, and the nose is soft too. Yeah. You know, it's a. Yeah, oh. no, I like that. That's kind of cool. Well, now right. I'm curious. All right, let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. 
spicy. Oh Ooh. my god. Yeah. Wow. That's got a beautiful oh, caramel to it. Holy crap, it just keeps rolling too. It really does. And it doesn't trail off into anything bitter. It just, yeah. you know, there's like like a caramel sweetness to it. Mm. And then it just rolls off into like butterscotch. That really is. That's just straight up caramel. Yeah. Caramel with some oak. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and the finish is really interesting on that because, you know, it starts off a little spiky, a little mm -hmm. little heat to it, and then it's like this caramel just washes over you, and then it just slowly fades out. No off notes, no funkiness, no nothing. That is just interesting. That's pleasant. That is really pleasant. Now, I don't think I'd describe it as being especially complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a nice sweetness to it, and the caramel, and... There is a nice oakiness to it, which I really enjoy that aspect. I think without the age statement, this would have been a little dull and a little one-sided to me. Um, would have been tasty, but I don't think it would have been especially interesting. Um, as far as the palate's concerned, it's it's a little on the thinner side, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but tasty. Yeah. Wow. Now, the second sip was, was much spicier than the first. So you're getting a really nice, you know, peppery, you know, spiciness. It's very lively on the tongue. But man, that caramel is just the show on that. It really is. Yeah, that's present even on the second one. Get a nice little bite on the side of the tongue too. Yeah. I like, the, I love the oak, the way the oak plays with that caramel. Yeah, the waterworks come out on this one too. Yeah. I will say, I think um, I'd be curious to see what this, this would do at a higher ABV. That's the one thing I'm a little curious about. Um, I don't know how much flavor you can get out of a rum without the aging. Um, if ABV really does anything there, uh, something maybe we'll find out with time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Now the uh, the, the the woody note on that is really interesting. It's yes. different than a bourbon note. It's different yeah. than a you know than a Scotch note. Yep. Well, and I wonder if that's, I mean, that could be climate, that could be the whiskey itself perhaps interacting with the wood. Maybe it interacts a little differently than what you get with, you know, like a scotch or a bourbon or something of that nature. Yeah. And we don't know what oak that they use for that. That's also true. They really don't specify. They don't say if it's American oak or... Or a European or maybe it was my, maybe it's Guyanese. Yeah. Well, that's interesting too. Yeah. Hmm. This might be a path <clears throat> worth walking down because I kind of dug that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the, you know, the the rum aisle is just as big as the is yeah. the, as the bourbon aisle. That's for sure. Well, it's kind of neat to go off into another path too, because we've done scotch for eons now, and then we kind of got hooked into bourbon, and we've really gone down that path. We've really grown, or there's definitely love towards bourbon now, sure. whereas initially there really wasn't. Um, so it's nice to have another item to look at or another path to go down. Yeah, we've even uh, dabbled our toe into tequila, yeah. or the mezcal. Yeah. And yeah, we got to get into some aged tequila too. Yeah. I'm curious about that now. But, uh, well, what are you thinking on our score? Um, right. I'm going to say three and a half. I'm going three on this one. It's it's enough to kind of get me interested. Now I want to see just how far down the rabbit hole we can go and what different uh, different offerings can uh, bring to the table yeah what's interesting too is i mean this is eight year eight year old and it was it was a bargain and you know the funny thing is is for eight years you buy an eight-year whiskey like a bourbon here in the states and that is real super oaky yes. eight years in scotland is nothing right this kind of strikes an interesting balance there i, I think so now I, I imagine it's probably aged in guyana i would think so and i would think the climate it would age very quickly or it would impart flavor very quickly but for an eight year i mean i didn't get any of that that weirdness that you can sometimes get with something that's been aged too quickly or too long yeah for sure um wow this was this was fun yeah i dig that this i think we might have to go down that path a bit more i think so too Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Hope you had a good time. We sure did. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. That's really interesting. I know, right? Wow, I didn't Look at us that. drinking friggin' rum.